Jumpstep. Creating the oil of the dog food. Steed. Chub. Step. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the king of the jungle. Notice me, senpai. Notice me. You want a beer, dude? Yeah, you slip me one. I love a nice cold beer. I love New York! Nobody cares! Everybody's got a mask on. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And the show started. Welcome! Welcome! Uh, we had quite a little issue getting started here, so... Yeah, and it was Jared's fault. It was definitely my fault. But The uh, speaker wasn't working for the 90th time in a, a row. Okay, well, we're excited to have Ben Thiel on the show. Ben, do you want a different Chubstep name, or do you just want to go by Ben? Because we're like uh, let's, ben. Go by, let's go, uh, George. Okay, George. Okay, yeah, we've never had, we have had a George on the show before, but uh, we used his full name, so that's okay. Yeah, and it was Greek and long. That's true. We and can't pronounce, pronounce last it. Name. Uh, but anyway, uh, Chubstep Ben George, uh, George Ben. Uh, he is on right now. Ben, I was in a, I was taking a ride with you. We were going to, was that the day we were going on the float trip, right? In Wisconsin. Yeah. The Wisconsin boat trip where we, uh, met Jeff Bezos and that Culver's. Yes, that's right. Where you met, uh, Bezos and Javi Baez. Speaking of that, they just went up in the, uh, the, the penis shaped rocket. I don't want to see your penis. I know. And they didn't say it, but, uh, Javi Baez was on there and Vaughn got snubbed, unfortunately. <laughs> You yeah. got the snub? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vaughn had gone, Chubstep Vaughn, he's been on the show. He'd been on the, went, went to the bathroom, came out, and said that he had met Bezos and Javi Baez, and they basically kicked him out of going on the, the rocket to the moon. Oh. So. Yeah, it was tragic. Yeah. <laughs> so that, uh, that all escalated today. And the, yeah, they did leave out the Javi Baez part in the news. Not surprisingly, fake news. Yeah, well, we know. We know the truth. Yeah. So on that on that talk, I had sent you an article from Terrence Howard, and it was a it was a book that he had written. And um, I'll give people my background with Terrence Howard. Uh, the first, I don't think I've ever told this story on the air. So the the first, and Ben, I don't know if you know the story. So uh, the. The the ep- the pilot episode of the show Empire was being filmed, and they needed. Uh, apparently, our show was going to record the the company I used to work for was going to record the music for the show, and I didn't know this. But I was driving into work, and I get a call that said, "Hey, we need you to uh, fly to Nashville today." And so this was on my ride in from St. Charles, like a forty minute ride in uh, to work, forty mile ride in, and like I'm. At 9.30 in the morning, they say, I need you to fly to Nashville. So I drive straight to the airport. I fly to Nashville. I don't know what I'm doing. When I get there, they call me, hey, we need you to go pick up this thing from this audio shop. So all of a sudden, I get a taxi. Ubers weren't a thing at the time. or they? I didn't have the phone to do it. I don't know. Whatever it was. Wow, I took a taxi. Back. Definitely were a thing like <laughs> three years ago. No, no. This would, have been, this would have been 2014. So... They were a thing, but it was not a big thing. So I took a taxi um, and I was at this audio shop and I said, hey, my boss said I need to pick up this. I didn't know what the time was. At the, so then I get to the place. I find out it's this microphone that they needed. I think it was like a Telefunken U47. It's like a $15,000 microphone. And I pick up that and some sort of other piece of audio equipment that I needed with it. And I grab that, put it back in the taxi, I put it on a check bag on my flight back to Chicago and I fly back that same day. So I was in Nashville for maybe like an hour and a half. That's and like a drug deal. It sounded, that's, I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was, I was really confused. And this is like, I've only been to the company maybe like three months at this point. So I get back and it was like 
I got back like later that night and I'm like, hey, I guess I got you guys a microphone. That's what you wanted the whole time. You could have just told me that. No, you know, again, I didn't know this. <laughs> but it was kind of fun <laughs> to just go on Nashville on a whim. But uh, I brought back this microphone and then the next day they were recording the music for Empire. And so I go, I'm like, hey, if I just went to Nashville, I want to sit in on this music recording session while they're doing the first song. So they did um, the song called What the DJ Spins which ended up having like 20 different versions as the show did its multiple seasons. Um, but in that first, uh, in the first couple of seasons, Terrence Howard was actually recording the music. So he came in and like actually wrote, like did a lot of the piano spots, um, recorded his vocals on it, did basically a lot of the beat and he like, basically produced the song while I was sitting in on the session. And then they needed background vocals for one of the scenes during or one of the chorus parts. So they had me and one of the audio engineers and then the two sons um, who ended up being Jesse Smollett. And then uh, uh -oh. Yaz was oh, the other son. Wow. So the four of us did the background vocals on this song that Terrence Howard, it was the first song that was recorded for Empire. And uh, that's how I got to know Terrence Howard. Uh, and then he ended up coming in the next bunch of, bunch of years um, to, you know, for Empire as we were working on the show Empire and, uh, and they're doing voiceover work and stuff like that. And anyway, later on. Jay, real real yeah. quick, can you just name drop a few more times? Just do I'm, a couple more celebrities, you know? <laughs> no. Yeah, I so this is, I'm getting this because I'm building up the story for Ben here. Because Ben's, Ben's got, this is why I brought Ben <laughs> Okay, that was a long backstory. <laughs> it is a long backstory, but I just realized I never told this, you know. Anyway, Terrence. Uh, you never so get to tell the story. Here's the point. Here's the point. Uh, Terrence Howard, a couple years later. Well, it'd be pretty hard to just jump in and be like, oh, by the way, I was talking to Terrence Howard. Yeah. <laughs> close personal friend. Just say close personal friend, Terrence Howard. Yeah. So <laughs> um, so anyway, a couple years later, he had uh, recorded a audio book and also came out with a regular, you know, uh, basically an ebook about how math is wrong. And so Ben is, you know, a... A chub step genius at the you know to say the least and so i figured he would know math, math guy. he's a math guy he knows math he, he actually enjoys math and likes to look at stuff so i figured i would i wanted to hit hear his opinions on terrence howard's uh math so ben can you give a little background on what what it this is, is this, ben i've known you for a long time i did not know you were a big math guy you know uh me and math we've just always gotten along really well uh, uh sort of deal, you know, just close acquaintances and all. Um, but yeah, this, <laughs> the thing you sent me, it's like, okay, so the basic thing that he believes is that um, one times one equals two. Yes. And um, it's like 160 pages long. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to explain oh that one times one equals two. And it's like, so I was reading over this before uh, the podcast because I thought, you know, there it might be a chance that, uh, no, there's like weird stuff in math, like um, one to the zero power is one or anything to the zero power is one. Like, that's kind of weird if you think yes. about it or stuff. Yes. So I thought like, oh shit, like maybe this guy, you know, knows some stuff, but um. <laughs> I think he just doesn't know how a square root works. <laughs> okay. So ex explain to us in, in layman's terms, because for people that are not that into math or have not taken a math class in 20 years, explain a little bit why, li like why one times one equals one and why he thinks one times one equals two. It, can you, do you have that <laughs> knowledge? Can you explain first what layman's means? layman's to put layman's into layman's terms uh, <laughs> um yeah um so i think he's saying that one times one so it's uh you know th this is a pretty uh skimmed article version of this entire thing but he it was like one times one is two reactions or, uh, and then they create an effect. So if you have one action and then one action, you get two effects. So therefore math is wrong. And that one times one equals two. Um, and then he went on to say that the uh, square root of four is two. So there, 
for the square root of two is one, um, which isn't really how a square root works. But <laughs> so his, basically he's just taking, he thinks of it's one plus one in a sense. Like, you know, so one times one equals one because times is the same thing as one group of whatever. So if it was three times four, it's three groups of four. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and if you have I, one group of three, then you have three things. That's just how yeah. multiplication works. I think um, of one, one times. Not one times one. I think of it one, one times. Or like two, two times and two two times it's is four, four. Yeah. and then if right. you have if you can go bigger uh-huh that's my understanding now i got a i got a d in the only college math class i took okay. mm -hmm. but it's because i was really hung over from margarita monday for the final well they should factor that into the curve i think they didn't. So too i can't believe they would do it after margarita monday that's a it's insane. <laughs> it, was, it was freaking BS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Cause I was thinking, you know, this, this reminds me a lot of, I was in a flat earther Facebook groups for a long time. Yes. Um, not as a fan, but more in the same way that, you know, you would go to a zoo and kind of like, Oh, you know, like look at them, you know, look at them, they're playing and stuff. <laughs> um, so I get a lot of those vibes you know, kind of from this, you know, way of thinking about things, AK okay. just being like completely wrong yeah. about everything. <laughs> Does he have any followers? Like, do people buy, like, do they actually think this is right? Or is it just him and he's a celebrity, so he has the, like, money to put his book out? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that because I don't, this was just, you know, this link is not, I would say it's not, it was not like a super popular book to my knowledge. Cause I, I just found a, this is posted for free, right? You can find this for free. It's not a paid. For I really hope this wasn't a super popular book. I don't know. <laughs> I I'm just saying, this a best might, seller. <laughs> obviously when you have, when you're a celebrity, you have a following, you know, so you, you have the ability to, to send out a message and this is the message you chose to send. And I don't, you know, this is his opinion on it. The problem is, Ben, if you started to think about math this way, what are the things with this change and, and why would this have a difficult time in reality? I mean, <laughs> so that, that's kind of like what his point was, that like everything is built on the fact or that one times one equals one. And if one times one equal two, like everything would collapse. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that it would collapse. It's, it kind of is like... Uh, in 2000, where everybody thought that, you know, when the year went from 1999 to 2000 yes. and then the digits go to zero and just everything would blow up, like everything, you know, all the computers would stop working and stuff. I think that's the argument he's trying to make. But I, I think that if we just decide that one times one equals two, it would just be a kind of a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say so. Because when it, I mean, there's a lot of, engineering and that's what his argument is like things would collapse because there's like engineering and things like construction everything's kind of based on these basic mm -hmm. mathematical skills so, yeah but you never do one times one in those yeah that's true you, d you do never use one time well <laughs> you never do because why would you you got one you don't need it you got one why would you multiply it by one i know some of these words yeah, oh, I, he's right. He's right. If you, <laughs> you, you don't have you have multiply to. one thing by one thing, then you get two things. He's right. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I well, I'm in. Earth is flat. It might as well be. It might as well be. Ben, do you have any theories that are like this? that um you would like to explain to people uh such as one times one equaling one or just or theory a theory that sounds outlandish maybe to most people but it's something you've thought about that has a slight possibility of being true that you would make a book from if you were a celebrity you know i i'm really still holding out on bigfoot yeah oh i'm really still holding so um 
Randy, Chub Step Randy. Has Randy been, ever been on the yeah, Ham podcast? Yeah, Hamboy. He's, been, He's on. been on the pod. Okay. Um, so he had this book that he was showing me by this, like, uh, I don't know. It's just like this really controversial, controversial journalist guy. It's called like Missing 411. And it's about all of these people going missing in North American, um, like, you know, parks and stuff. And they all have like these really weird, like similarities to each other. Like it always happens like a few days before, like a really long rain or something, or there's always these certain plants that grow there and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I watched a 40 minute YouTube video on it and now I'm hooked and I'm pretty sure that Bigfoot did it. Um, that's, that's the one I'm holding really? out on. <laughs> okay. The thing that gets me about Bigfoot is I feel like somebody would have seen a giant big footed guy walking around. Well, yeah, there was like allegedly there's all these stories that, you know, people, I don't know. I don't know if people are just on drugs or drugs or they see a bear and it looks, yeah, it's hard to know when people are seeing, cause obviously everybody's seen that one picture <laughs> right and that was a like guy in a suit 30 or 40 if, if years I was ago really high like really high and i was in the woods for some reason and i saw a bear because bears stand on their feet sometimes on their back feet yeah if i saw that shit i'd be in one of those stories that i saw bigfoot and, same exactly yeah. if i saw that i would to my dying breath say, <laughs> yeah, I I bigfoot he was right here yeah he's real <laughs> <laughs> and a, a lot of people do go, like a lot of those teenage kids, they go to the forest reserves to smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a popular spot. And, just... <laughs> and Bigfoot loves smoke too, so he, he always comes lumbering by. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, Ben, overall, your conclusion from reading this is you don't you do not think it's accurate. You do not think one times one equals two. Did Do you think there was some good points in this, or you just thought overall you didn't agree? Well, the only the only good point that I can think of with this is that it sounds like, OK, one times one, of course, that equals one. But like we never stop to think like, oh, why? Or is yes. there any other way that it could we, be? We just accept you know? things to be. We true. just accept, we just accept yeah. things, you know, <laughs> like. Um, Explain as you would a child. The zero factorial is one and factorial is like four, you know, time. I think it's times no, no, no. four plus three plus two plus one. That's it. And then like two factorial is two plus one. Mm-hmm. One is just one plus, you know, itself. Yeah. So why is zero equal to one? So it's like, there's weird yeah. things like that. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. I know it doesn't make any sense, uh, but we just kind of accept it. So I appreciate that he's looking for things that we accept Yeah. and challenging it. I, I just wish um, that the arguments were a little bit better, you okay. know. And and I get that. And and to be fair, I mean, he's the arguments could be, you know, we accept a lot of things to be true. You know, a thousand years ago, they accepted that you know the Earth was the center of the you know universe. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. like things people accept a yeah, lot of things that later on they, turn they out. They didn't not to have be like true. iPhones, Jared. That was just some priest going, hey, you get this is, yeah, this Bible I got says this. So that's what we're sticking with. Well, as I say, people just accepted that that's the reality until, you know, science, I think, is a constantly evolving thing that. This is why I do Steve science, Jared. Yeah. To prove the doubters wrong. (laughs) Terrence Howard would not survive Steve science. I could Steve science the shit out of him. 20 minutes of research. I actually would like to see Terrence. I'm going to invite Terrence on. Terrence, if you're listening to this, we'd like you to come on and talk about. The thing is, I would like debate. to hear. Oh, we'll debate. That's what we, we challenge him. That would be a great debate. Uh, we could have oh, you two debate, you two debate him. And I would I would love to, to see that because obviously he's going to be much more connected and have much more knowledge of this than I'm sure he could even get off in a book. Right. I mean, you're going to. He's probably oh, yeah. strong That's opinions on why he thinks not, you're wrong about that. Like, but shorter than books so he'd have more facts and figures mm-hmm. steve had steve would have more passion to back it up though yeah and i got the fact that one one times is one 
I would like to see it with blocks. I want to see it with just like bl- I would just want to see blocks and just see how it works with blocks. <laughs> That's how you just like learn it at elementary no, school. No, yeah. <laughs> if I want pennies, give me pennies. Two if I have two blocks, then I got two things, and then Terrence Howard wins. I there you go. Blocks. Well, yeah. Uh, well, Ben, I, uh, is there anything else you want to get to? Because I, I don't want to keep you too long. I know it's later on. Oh, no. I'm all right. I'm 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 watching the finals right now, so I can go okay. and have it. Who's winning? Okay. My sisters have the game. Uh, it's like the Suns are up by three. Uh, and I, just, I bet the over in the first quarter and just got absolutely obliterated. So <laughs> got to make my money back. Good. I actually only... want the Suns to win this game. So then on Friday, I can go to the Deer District and rage. Whoa, rage. Yeah, Deer District? That's, that's going to be insane. Nice. Jay's in. Jay's in. Nice. Chub step. The... I, I like that teams are playing right now that haven't won in forever. I think that part is fun. The only reason I'm not like overly rooting for the Bucks is because I have a lot of friends that live in the Milwaukee area. And not all of them, but there are a few of my friends that are very annoying when it comes to the Chicago versus Wisconsin sports. So in uh, general, I tend to root against Wisconsin teams because they are so annoying every time they win. Just nonstop trying to rub it in offense. I'll rub it in my face about how the Chicago teams are doing bad and the Wisconsin teams are doing well. So, um, especially the Brewers fans. Yeah, Brewers. You ever you ever been to like a whatever? What's their city called? Mid Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, no, I've never been this. Yeah, something like that. Town of shit. There's no (laughs) buildings. They have the same lake we do. You can't hold that over us. You got nothing. There's yeah, I lived in there. I lived in Waukee for a summer, and it that it sucked. You no, I, was not, I was not a fan. I actually, like, really. Why is it so cold up here? It's two hours away from Chicago, it's just cold. The, the one cool thing I will say is that Waukee, every single weekend in the summer, would have block parties and live music outside. Yeah. Uh, all so that was that was pretty cool. Hey, but Chicago has that too. You're just in the wrong neighborhood. Go to Boys Town. They got. Uh, <laughs> I'm dangerously close. <laughs> you just walk yeah. outside. God, they shut the street down, baby. Yeah. Me and Ben are both within a quick walk. Um, so, but actually, I actually really enjoy Milwaukee quite a bit. I just, from a sports perspective, um, I, it's not my favorite yeah. just because I'm a Chicago boy at heart. So, okay. Uh, uh, ben, you you feel free to go. Yeah. Um, You've served your purpose. You've served it well. Thank you. Thank you for having me on, guys. It's uh, nice to finally be a chub boy. Hey, thanks for coming on. You're you're a good chub boy. I didn't. I had no idea you were a math chub. You got big. Yeah, Ma- mathematical two. chub. And here's a great silver lining for all of us. You know, one ch- chub times one chub is actually equal to two chubs. So, oh. you know, it's like. We got the two main chubs. You guys are just one times one. It's, yeah. Damn. Wow. Never We're thought chubby. about it like that. So, yeah. I, mental I, steak. Yeah. All right. Appreciate it, Ben. Thank you. All right. See you guys. All right. See you. Later. Hi, this is Billy Bob Thornton. Welcome to my official website. And as Sage says, what's up? All right, Steed. Um, what's been going on with you? Um, so I had a experience today. Yeah. It's fresh in my mind and I, I have to talk about it. Yeah. I was in a public restroom at, I want to say nine in the morning. I'm at Home Depot buying some duct tape. Starting my day off. Great. Working, having fun. Got to get some duct tape. Got to go to the bathroom. So I go into the bathroom. And I had to go number two, right? Okay. I had to poop. Guys got to poop sometimes. So I go in Home Depot bathroom. I start to poop. And two stalls over from me, there's another guy pooping. And he's moaning. Oh, God. Not, or it was like a grunt moan. I'm going to replicate it here. Okay. ASMR. ASMR. Oh, God. Oh. 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 
So I'm hearing that. Oh, God. I'm hearing that. that so I'm bring, I want to bring up bathroom <laughs> etiquette. And also, uh, if you ever make those sounds, you should be – you got to check yourself into the hospital. If you can't <laughs> move in a public place without audibly moaning. Something is wrong with you. Like big time. Yeah. I, yes. Um, like what the fuck? I have never pooped and had to like visibly just be like, oh. It wasn't like, oh, like he's in phys- like extreme physical pain. He's just, oh. And he knew I'm in there. I'm making noise. I'm rolling the. The toilet paper thing, that big toilet. I'm rolling that. I flush it at a time, and he's just continued to moan. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I there's a, there's a couple of things that people do, you know, in public restrooms, and just like just keep it, you know, maybe just go back to your house before you do anything else. I've heard the moaning before, maybe not to that extreme, but the other one is the uh, females don't know this, but there'll be some older guys sometimes that will like lean against a urinal. Like a three-point NFL stance. Um, yeah. Two feet spread out really wide. One hand on top of, like, against the wall. And yeah. it is just, it is weird to see. I do that at home sometimes. Uh, mainly when I'm drunk because I need stability. Yes. yes. I got to hold on I to get, something. I get that. I get that. Um, but it's it's a rough look when you're in a public setting to just be a spread out wide grown man, like leaning over something. And that usually yeah. follows some sort of noises that I don't want to hear any of it. Just uh, remember that you're in a public space. Other people are there and they are judging you hard judging. Yeah. Big time. I'm on my fucking lunch break. Okay. Sweet steed. Uh, I had a little story about this weekend. I had a couple things going on. I had a wedding on Thursday. Oh, wow. And I realized I have five more weddings before the end of the year. Jay, you go to so many weddings. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, uh, so Amy's actually been to more than me and my fiance. She, so by the time we get married, she will have been to 40 weddings. Is that insane? Why? 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 I, and I'm like in the 30s. I'm in the 30s. Like, Why? How do you know that many people? I just, I get well, around. I don't know that many people, but... I, I can't deal with 30 people that like, like I have to interact with enough yeah. for them to be like, come to my wedding. I can't do it. You got to get gifts. You got to look good. You can't be wearing the same thing to every wedding. Um, so true. yeah, you got it. Yeah. It's a thing, but it was a, uh, it was actually a Thursday wedding. And that was the first time I had a wedding on Thursday. This one is one that had been moved a few times because of COVID stuff. And they were able to get a date on a Thursday and it, you know what? It was as tough as it was to go to work the next day. It was also nice to just whip it up and be like, hey, tomorrow's going to be a little rough. I'm fine with that. Oh, a little so, party hard. Hell yeah. Yeah, but it was a good It was a good time. Um, that. Okay, so then I went to a Sox game with Face uh, one of the days. It is Shamrock riding dirty. I tried to find Pat, but he uh, he didn't respond to me until it was too late. But I had never seen, I went to the Sox game and I'm not an over, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge baseball fan in general. I like going to games and I usually prefer the Cubs over yeah. the Sox, but I, I like going to games in general. But I'd never seen something, it happened in real life. I've never witnessed it in a game. I've seen it on TV before, but I've never like actually witnessed it. But it was a, somebody hit a home run and then the next guy up hit another home run. Back to back home runs. It was pretty sweet. There was like six or seven home <laughs> runs that game. It was a rager. But there is a thing that guys do, which at first I was, it, it's it's a thing that is very only in, it's very big only in baseball. You would never see this in basketball or other sports, but it's the guys that create their own book, um, they, their own stat book. Have you seen oh, this before? God, yeah. Yeah. In so, the stand. You just have the weirdos. Well, it's like, and that was, see, that was my thought at first too, but I'm like, and then on second thought, and after talking to some other people, I'm like, these guys just, this is what they love. I mean, this is like, this is this guy's like life. This is what he loves. They put on the radio headset. They've got a headset that's literally just playing the radio for, so they can hear it live. You hear it even better than in this, you know, to me, I would not want to hear something on the radio while I'm watching it in front of me. 
because I'm like in the stadium. Um, yeah. But they get the they had the radio headset on, and then is just marking down his book what's going on with every you know stat. Even though they do keep the stats, they have a whole team that's keeping the stats. But it's just like a a fun yeah, thing so you on your phone. Yeah, you can look it up on your phone. Um, but and at first I was like, this is kind of weird. But then I'm like, you know what? This is just this is this guy's hobby. This is what he's into. Good, you know, good on him. I don't like it. That's fair. That's fair. Um, unless unless you're aggressively gambling on that sports team, yeah, you don't need to be that into that. I and I agree with you. I Steve and you're pretty similar to me. We don't grab onto one thing and make it like our life or death scenario, right? I, I a lot of people do that with sports. A lot of people do that with a TV show or something like. What are you like? Somebody says, "What are you into?" And somebody said, "I'm into, you know, watching The Bachelor." I'm into. It's usually not The Bachelor, but just say like, "I love uh, <laughs> Stranger Things" or something like that. You're drinking loving milk. What's that? I love drinking milk. <laughs> well, that's not an exact example that I'm talking about. But if you're into it, like, it's good to be into a sports a sports team or a TV show as long as that's not your whole life. Um, as long yeah. as when the thing is done, you're still going to live on as soon as, as long as when the sports team loses, you're still going to have a good day. Like, don't be so into something, something that is not in your control that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause like you really have no outcome on watching the game of, you know, what's going to happen. But there, I know people that if their college team lost, it's like, they're having a shitty day. And it's like that you're a little yeah, too just into that. Yeah, they thinking like. Man, if we had only played, yeah. done this route, and like done yeah. these three differences, yeah, in the third quarter, like they go to sleep thinking about that, just I know. angry. I know, and, <laughs> and 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 I get that, and I like actually listening to sports radio. I I, I listen, I watch sports shows and all the stuff. I lo- I really enjoy sports, but I don't let it affect my next day or even the rest of that day. You know, like I, it's I'm not so into it that it's affecting my overall livelihood, but there's a lot of people. And I, my assumption would be these guys that do that are maybe into it a little too much and maybe don't have a ton going on, but I could be wrong about that. I could totally be wrong about that because I don't know many people that do that. And if it's a hobby they enjoy, good for them. But I just, it's an interesting thing that I only see in baseball that I don't see in any other sport. Yeah. I mean, I go to games. I've been to like Cubs games before. This was before they had the scoreboards and stuff, Yeah, but like four innings passed. And I didn't even realize it because I was just in the stands crushing those goose islands. <laughs> and there's like before they had like the scoreboard and shit at Wrigley. Yeah. You there was no like announcers or anything. There would be like some noise and then you just turn around and you're like, okay, it's a six inning. What just happened? Yeah. <laughs> They've been playing baseball. I it, guess. it is easy if you're not paying attention. It's easy for the time to go by and you just don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, so then uh, I, I played in a volleyball tournament one day, and then later the day I went to my grandma's house, and we were helping clean out her uh, her pantry because, oh, yeah, I think people saw this on my the, if you follow me on Instagram, and uh, I was at yeah I was at my grandma's, and we were cleaning our pantry, and because uh, she is getting like a knee surgery, she's recovering, so we're just kind of doing some work around her house while she can't move much right now. And we moved this um, cupboard that was in her uh, pantry. She's kind of like a walk-in pantry, and there's a little, like a couple cabinet type things underneath the pantry area. Pulled it out, and yeah, this, there was this mayo behind it, this mayonnaise, and it was it was like had a yellow tint to it. It was no longer white, and that's how I knew <laughs> it was going to be old. And then I I did a poll on Instagram, and I had like thirty something responses, and. It was the expiration date was 1998, and it's it was 1998. So, for context, that's 23 years expired. 23 years expired. Manny has probably last for a year or two. Especially 1998. (laughs) There was, and then I actually went to the uh, the spice cabinet, and I had seen this article recently. It's like if your McCormick spices are in a metal tin. They were before this year. And it means they're not bad, but they're not going to have basically any flavor anymore. Like you can still yeah. eat them, but they're just, it's going to take like triple the amount to have the same effect. <laughs> um, 
And I did see a McCormick, I think it was like a thing of ground ginger that was 1977. Oh my God. And I have a picture of that. But, uh, you know, it just. That's why no uses ground ginger. That's whatever, like, don't yeah, buy. whatever it was, like my grandma, it's not like she uses any of that stuff. She just like, she also is, is fairly short, so she doesn't see, like, she can only see so much of the, you know, yeah, like if somebody put, put something in a spot, you're just never going to see it. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I could see how that could easily happen, especially if she's been in the same house forever. I could see it easily happening, and especially like the mayo, it was literally like stuck behind this pantry, you know, this like cabinet thing that was like, that we so pulled out the cabinet thing, it just happened to be back there. Um, it, yeah, it was a little do, gross, but it's just funny you, to just, you, what's that? Did you toss the mayo? Did you oh, we did. We, did you... we did not. I did not want to open it up. I didn't know whatever smell might be coming from that. Oh my God. You got to put that like under somebody's bed as a prank <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't hate anybody enough to do that to them. <laughs> yeah. That would be bad. Yeah. We skate for fun. We're soul skaters. Crystal, who we had on the show, was doing something for the phallic diet where she was posting uh, pictures of hot dogs from around the country. That obviously hot dogs is probably part of the phallic diet, but kind of a yeah. different takes on hot dogs and things like that. Hot dog themes for her cookbook and her website, Go Eat a Carrot. And me and Steed actually put together a Chicago style, um, kind of a high end Chicago style dog. It was really good. It was really good. And she posted it on her website, Go Eat a Carrot. And so I'll post the link to that in the in the description of the show. So people can go find it there. But I wanted to bring that up because uh it was and there's a lot of other good recipes on there. So we're gonna try some of those it, maybe. It was a top well, I haven't checked out the full hot dog blog. Yeah. But our I mean our hot dog, our Chicago dog. Yeah. People we shared it with the some people. Yeah. And they were saying, Man, that's the best dog I've ever eaten. Yeah. No, and it, that's that's a quote. That's a that's a direct quote. And I would agree it was a very it was a very good take and kind of high end. We always just made like a high end mustard. High, just you know, it's just quality ingredients. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Yeah. But we just made it's a organic. good organic. Yeah, it's all organic. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Steve, is there one more thing you want to get to here? Yeah, I can do um, either Tanzania or I can do a weight loss device. You Ooh. pick. Maybe weight loss device. Weight loss device. <laughs> All right. So I was uh, scrolling the interwebs. Yeah. I have no idea how I actually came across this. Okay. Um, but there's a, there's a new weight loss device on the market. And... Thanks to Steve Science, I'm pretty sure it involves magnets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So uh, the new weight loss device called the Dentalism Diet Control, Den- Dental Slim Diet Control, yeah, is literally magnets that imagine like braces. You put these magnets on your teeth, one top tooth, one bottom tooth. And it holds your mouth together so you cannot eat solid food. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what we got to have on, Steve, talking about this more? I got a friend, Tom, who is a, uh, a dentist. And he was on the old version of Chub Step back when we were at Marquette. I think it would be fun to have Tom talking about this device. Yeah. Um, so you can open your mouth two millimeters so you can breathe and talk. But I assume you'll be talking like this, because talk, this is talking like yeah, this talking seems like, like this. two millimeters. Yeah. No, you know what? I can talk kind of normal if it was just a magnet. If I was just talking normal, yeah, a little bit, it would just be a little bit muffled. Just bite our teeth down, yeah. yeah really. But you know what? There is a release, emergency release mechanism oh, in good. case you choke or have a panic attack. Oh my god! You can god. release it. So, see, how's, this isn't an exercise device. This is like a home remedy version of a gastric bypass surgery. Uh, yeah, so the, that's actually one of the praises. It is a very cheap uh, alternative to surgery because you just clamp your, uh, clamp your mouth shut. 
with a magnet. <laughs> I mean, the logic's there, so right? Insane. I mean, it makes it's perfect so sense. It How could you not lose It is crazy that some dentist guy was like, mm, I know. I know how to make you skinny and girl and just You can't eat those sausages no more. <laughs> Clamps their mouth shut. And uh I mean it's gotta work. There's no way it doesn't work. I, it seems genius to me. I I'm gonna get one right now. Because Oops. for me, like if I were to have a weight problem, it would be because it would be because of fried chicken. I love fried chicken. <laughs> Love it so much. See, but Steve, if you if you ended up closing up your mouth and doing this thing, you just end up just eating the gravy. I would just be no, I don't like gravy. That's okay. the thing about. Me. So I would just be shoving fried chicken in between my two millimeter tooth gap, and I'd probably <laughs> choke. I'd probably die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's not like to me. It's not like the the texture of the food affects how good it is for you. Like I get still down. A bunch of Mountain Dews with a, you know, closed mouth. And yeah, but I that's still, gotta be less than... I can still have a chocolate that cake shake. This has gotta be for, like, those 500-pound twin sisters or whatever that are on A&E. Um, and, like, if for them, that's gotta help. If it, if, I mean, Mountain Dew's gotta be better than, like, eating a whole cake. I don't know. I don't know, Steve. I don't know. I don't know I, either, but... I just say Mountain like we go through you faster and you would get less fat. The thing is, if you don't have it's all about the mindset and it's reality, like people are always looking for an easy way out. If you don't have the mindset that you're going to want to eat somewhat healthy or exercise somewhat, it's whatever little device you're going to do, you're going to get back to your, like even people that get the gastric bypass surgery. If they start eating really shittily, they can still find ways to not lose the weight that they're supposed to. Yeah, but what if you gave them the surgery and then clamped their mouth shut with yeah. magnets? <laughs> I mean, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I would just love to see them eat a hard-boiled egg. Like, somebody's got a hard-boiled egg, and they just, like, push it through their teeth. <laughs> oh just, like, put their mouth to it and just slam it against, slam it through their teeth, and it goes through the little gaps in their teeth until they could eat the hard-boiled egg. That's, that's the only thing I imagine, like, uh, White Goodman from Dodgeball. Yeah. When he's, like... Eating the fried chicken like he has one of these, and he's just shoving <laughs> through it, shoving yeah. it in through his like gap. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, I love it. Yeah, I I'd say let's go for it, dude. Uh, yeah, I I invested all my all my stocks. Are in I'll put some Bitcoin in it. Them now. I'll you got see. some Bitcoin spare? Yeah. yeah I'll put some Bitcoin stuff. into it. It's probably a good idea. All right, perfect, dude. I love it. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, email show chubstep.podcast at gmail.com. We got some emails to get to next week. Uh, then also uh, follow Pat. I know he wasn't on the show today. Pat Callahan 044 on Instagram. If you want to see some memes, he's been posting a lot of memes. He posted a lot of memes recently. Then uh, Ben, who was just on Chubstep, George Ben. And then Steed, Steed Swallows on Instagram. Steed Swallows is blowing up. <laughs> we Retweet from Kim K. <laughs> he hasn't Kim. posted anything in months. That's awesome. Kim Corn. Oh, Corner Kim Corn. A little different. Corn. Yeah. Yeah. Another account I made. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I do episodes every Thursday. Thank you for listening and share the episodes with a friend. The show has ended. Be gone. Now you know you got to go. Peace. This is Yasin.